Hello, welcome to Dream Again Africa. It's so exciting to be back with you again right here on Dream Again Africa. Professor Harry Pesta is with us again. We did not leave this studio from last week and if you were watching, you will know and have seen it. So we decided to just stay in studio and continue this journey. Thank you for joining us. We are talking about financial management. So, Professor, whoa, you are blessed. You are a blessing. We are receiving so much jewels uh, from the teachings and the mentorship, actually, that you are busy doing with us at this time. We want to focus now on the matter of the world system and the kingdom way of doing business. Yes, I think it's, um, it's important to distinguish between the two because, I mean, there's a very clear um, a difference between the two in the Word of God because there's one system that the Word of God says you cannot serve God and mammon. The same, uh, the same this, 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 this God of money and this God of power and influence and, and serve God because um, God's principles for business differ totally mm. and, and you cannot dwell in darkness and light at the same time. That's what the Word of God teaches us. So there's a vast difference between the two. What about giving? I think it's important if we if we look at things like giving, receiving versus buying and selling, the one is purpose and the other one is provision. So when we look at um, the way, when the word of God says buy and sell, we look at the business principle. But we have to realize that that's the way that God puts food on our table because the word of God teaches us that we will work and we will earn at the, in the sweat of our brow. Mm. So hard work is part of us, but we have to realize that that's not our main purpose. That's the way of God providing for me and my family. We have to distinguish between the two because sometimes, um, the focus on my job, the focus on my business, the focus on money becomes my purpose. And that is not in line with the word of God. We have to realize that the buying and selling part is the provision. But my purpose is always glorifying God, being this vessel uh, that uh, that brings heaven to earth through the guidance of Holy Spirit um, and glorifying God in everything I do. And that brings in the, 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 the concept of giving and receiving because then we realize that when God provides for me, he guides me on how to give or receive it. And the two actually don't work against each other. The one is the way God provides for us. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the way that God wants me to, to apply this in his kingdom. And in that obedience, it expands what he trusts me with as I continue walking in obedience to God. On what you have just shared with us, what is the biggest uh, uh, challenge that you recognize with entrepreneurs, especially as an auditor, from an auditing uh, perspective? Uh, do you find giving being anywhere in those uh, financials? I think that that's a that's a major problem because what we do um, as entrepreneurs or the pitfall for entrepreneurs, because it's a very cash based type of system, mm. we first want to take care of all our stuff. And the word of God says, but the first part you have to give to him. So if we look at Leviticus 27, he teaches us that principle. He says, if you give the first part of your harvest to me, it sanctifies everything that follows and it cleanses everything that follows. So he's saying that the first part of your harvest, Harry, you put back into the kingdom mm. because then it sanctifies everything that follows. Matthew 6.33 says the same. It says, first ye seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all oh. other things will be added. So what we do is I first want to pay my house. I want to pay my car. I want to pay this. I want to pay that. And if there's anything left, I sow it into the kingdom of God. And then if we look at the principle, I'm an accountant. So I look at the principle and say, but if I give my final part, what faith is required? If I want to give, if I've paid everything for myself, what faith do I require for God providing for my needs? Because I don't trust him enough to say that, God, 
as your word says, I will sow the first part back into your kingdom and trust you because for me as an accountant to realize that 90% is bigger than 100% in the kingdom of God yes. um, was a major mind shift because, mm. I mean, we are number crunches. So um, for me, it was a very difficult years back to, sure. uh, to understand. But the moment you understand that, you see, but... But when God sanctifies that, he blesses it, and that starts growing in a way that you can't imagine. What is your advice on that very same point when it comes to uh, the fact that how entrepreneurs receive, for example, um, cash in the business month by month? Say, for example, they just receive exactly what's enough to pay the staff. I think it's important to, to understand that if a lot of people say to me, yes, but, but God's much more gracious than the bank. Um, so <laughs> God will understand if I don't do that. And that's what the prophet Malachi writes about. He says, mm. you look at the worldly system, you look at people that, that run their businesses in this worldly system, and you think, oh, but they are blessed because they don't serve God, but it looks as if the cash is raining on them. Mm. Um, and he says, but... It's for a very short while. Mm -hmm. um, but if you realize that God is in control, you do it in his way. Because sometimes it appears that, listen, this is all I have. But if you sow that seed, you will see it multiply in a way. But it, it, it requires faith. And faith says it's a substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. evidence of things not seen. Now, if we look at that, evidence of things not seen it's not evidence of things that don't exist mm. you can't have evidence if something doesn't exist it has to exist to but it says we don't see it yet but we trust it because god said it and uh, and that's the basic principle for business because if we walk in trust with god trust is like the currency mm. of a successful business god's way <laughs> I love that statement. Let's go to a practical example. Professor, you receive 20,000. All your staff members' salaries are 20,000. What is your advice to the entrepreneur? Mm. I think it's important to understand that, um, that, uh, that, that God will provide that. So he will, give us, he will give you a way. In some or other way, he will either give you a bridging finance, he will supply that, he will open the doors. So he says, um, you will not stand ashamed to pay the people. Um, but still, it's important to know that the harvest, because the word of God says, the harvest is important to, to, to bring unto the Lord the part that is to be given to him. So once I've, I've done that many times to mm. say that, Lord, um, this month my payroll is running there and the debtors aren't paying the way they're supposed to pay. So how will I do that? And the moment I've, I sow that seed, some or other door opens, either sometimes by a bridging, okay. sometimes by an investor coming in um, a, a, and saying, listen, sometimes by a new client saying, listen, I want to pay a deposit for something that needs. And then God's always provided that over 21 years. Mm. I've never been, I've never had to stand ashamed. And, and, and I've always applied that principle that God, but you said that if I do it this way, um, and it sounds in a materialistic way, it sounds, mm. it's impossible. It's not going to work that way. What I actually want to challenge people to, to, to start sure. because Malachi says, um, mm. test me in that. God says, test, test me. me, test me in this. And you will see me open the windows of heaven and reign over you. And if I've tested him many times, not because of anything else, but a trust. Mm. And every time he's done it in the way that, Sometimes I don't. I expect him to come from the north, and he comes from the south in a totally unexpected way. But he's always be, because God is. Um, he, is God. he will keep his word. Yes, he's a sovereign God. Help us in deciding on uh, the investments uh, in the kingdom. Speaking about financial management, for example, there's different elements of what you need to take care of as an entrepreneur, from your families, from the community. Uh, to uh, your practical needs in the business, to investment, to saving to the future, all of those things that are demanding this very same 20,000. I just want to ask uh, you to help the entrepreneur to how do you from that 20,000 20, make sure that you have looked into the 360 degree view of investing? 
I think it's important to understand all the elements of business in this sense. Certain mm-hmm. people are providing the services in your organization, in your company, in your business, whatever you call it. So it's important to have that structure right. Okay. Because many times mm-hmm. we mismanage our priorities mm-hmm. and we blame, ups, ups, yeah, <laughs> we blame time or we blame something else and say, I don't have time, mm-hmm. I don't have this, I don't have that. And, and to get that thing right of... Um, resource management, time management, um, mentorship. I think that's the key because once that fits in, because we can't always throw people at a problem. Sometimes we have to trust God for wisdom to say that um, um, how to change the production and effectiveness in a business his way. And if that balance is right, he says that the business will prosper and grow. Amen. Thank you. You are watching Dream Again Africa and we are talking to Professor Kheri on financial management, looking into the world system versus the kingdom way of doing business. As we move into striving and resting, do we work to strive? I think Mm. it's important when God says he gives us a rest day. So um, in, in the beginning, in Genesis 1 and 2, he says, in six days, God made the heaven and earth, and then the seventh day he rested. God did not rest because he needed, he was tired. And because the word of God says in John 4, 24, God is spirit. So God did not need to rest. He was giving us a pattern to say that, listen, this is how you work. Okay. And then he says, if you keep that rest, not only will you recharge and you will, he, he actually speaks it sometimes and he says, that's the place where I lift you up and that place where where you spend time with me in order for me to breathe into you what you need um, Mm. for your decisions that you need to make and for you to run your business. So he gives us a pattern to say that, listen, you cannot work 24-7. It's not good for you. He's the designer of our body. He is the creator. He's the one that made us. So he knows that we need that place. And then from a decision point of view, from a spiritual point of view, he, he, he says, everybody, anybody that is tired and, mm. and, and a heavy burden, come to me, I will give you rest. So he, he asks of us and he, he teaches us that from a place of rest in him, we need to make our decisions. And that mm. means that whenever I am in the place with him, because I've spent time with him, Mm. Um, in that place, from that place, he, I can hear his voice to make the decisions in his wisdom and in his knowledge because we tend to rush because we are so busy and our time management goes out of the window mm. because we don't have time. And what I've come to see in my business, I first put in the appointments I have with God and the rest of the world has, sure. to, has to fit around that because if I don't have that, I'm not counseling the CEO of my business, who is God. I'm not counseling him, so how can I do what he expects me to do in obedience if I never counsel in the sense of hearing from him, in the sense of listening to him, spending time um, seeking counsel from the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If I don't have that time, everything's going to go wrong at some stage. Speaking of things going wrong at some stage, I'm reminded of just the levels of burnout in the business at the moment because of the pressure of, uh, of making things. And now there's the new thing around um, the, uh, being, getting paid double for working 24-7. Yes. And people are falling into that a lot and overtime and issues such as overtime uh, so people don't take the rest because you're going to get paid double and then they can meet the needs. What is your advice on that? Because there's a lot of burning out. I think it, 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 it's got to lead to a burnout if you don't stick to the pattern that God gives us because he gives us a certain pattern and I think time management is essential mm. because the moment we think we can manage time, we've lost already because there's, in, in, in my opinion, in the service industry, time management is a concept that is man-invented because from an accounting point of view, mm. we have 24 hours a day We have 60 minutes in an hour. We have 60 seconds (laughs) in a minute. So uh, my brain calculated that and says, okay, we have 86,400 seconds a day, all of us. All of us receive the same time. 
The moment we try to manage that, we've lost already because you can't manage. It's just ticking away. We have to manage priorities to fit into the time. Mm -hmm. And by doing that is, and by saying that is, it's important to realize that what does God say? What's the important things to put into your day? And the first thing is to, to learn from him, to spend your time with him because he then counsels you for the rest of the day in what you need to do. He, he tells you what to do. And then from there, uh, we can manage our priorities to fit in. But sometimes we say, we have to rush after this, mm. we have to rush after this. And we spend those th time, the time that we have, we spend in a way that, that we focus on the pressure and we focus on the provision and on the mm. selfish and needs that we have. And then burnout has to follow because it's not God's pattern. If we don't stick to God's order, we will burn out at some stage. Buying and selling versus receiving, giving and receiving. Yes, I think um, I think it's important to be to be um, to be educated in that to to be mm. um, to have the knowledge of what God's word says about that, and that's where mentorship is a foundation in entrepreneurship in business. Because I've heard that word a lot of times yes. in this conversation. Let's go into mentorship. You see, if we look at the word of God, it teaches us that fear stands against faith. And unfortunately, people are in, in, in an economy that sometimes pressurizes us. We sit in a place where fear has become the biggest decision maker in our sure. finances because we are sometimes driven with fear because I'm, I'm, I'm fearful to let go of my knowledge because I feel security. I feel safe in that place because as long as I am the only one that has this knowledge, mm. I am the key person so they can't get rid of me. And that's not biblical mentorship. If you look at the model of biblical mentorship, and you have many examples, Paul and Timothy, Elijah and Elisha, um, Naomi and Ruth. We have a lot of those mentorship relationships in the Bible. We look at what God's word teaches us. It says that to transfer the knowledge, to teach others is a basic principle. So what we do in the business environment I don't want to transfer my knowledge because I'm scared that that person will take my place. If we look at the, if we go back to the Bible times and listen to this, how amazing this is. The teachers in, in, in the Bible times were called rabbis. They still call that today in, in Israel. But if you look at that, you see that the, the biblical um, a foundation for mentorship is transferring the knowledge as soon as possible. An example of that is if I'm 65 and I can transfer all my knowledge and all my skills to a 45-year-old manager, then he or she has 20 years to grow beyond that point and to grow deeper into knowledge and to expand that business, to expand that knowledge. But we don't do that because fear drives us and we are so scared that we will lose our position, we will lose um, what we have. I'd rather go to the grave with my knowledge than transferring it. And then the generation that follows just makes the same mistakes, mm. they go through the same things. But if I transfer that, then a generation moves forward, a company moves forward, and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper into excellence. That is the basic foundation of God's word. What happens uh, is that people who, are, who are, have been generous uh, with their knowledge have found that the young upcoming quickly get what they are sharing with them and begin to overtake them, especially in environments with, with, uh, which are just about transacting. So they feel that they just get thrown away and then the companies run with the young and are coming and this has brought fear. So what would, is your advice to those decision makers? I think it's important that the companies return 
um, to the way that uh, to the principles of, of of God's way of doing business. Because if that if that happens, then then loyalty won't be only a word. Mm -hmm. Loyalty will be something that will actually exist. Because I mean, that's something that's disappeared um, in in the business environment. I mean, um, people are there's there's no way people are loyal to each other. I mean, the more you can give me, then my loyalty changes. So my loyalty is determined okay. by my needs for you. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a worldly concept because God's word says something totally different because loyalty is actually, if you look at the Hebrew word, it's part of love. It's part of love. In love, it's woven in loyalty. So, so loyalty is something that the world has tried to take out. And the word of God says, um, the biggest asset I have is my word. And that's the most binding contract in the word of God is the word that I give to people. But the word, the world has tried to extract that and destroy that. And, and, and I mean, that's the most important thing that there is, is um, and your integrity again and your ethics it determines the value of your word. You mentioned love and I was just triggered immediately that that's almost the word you never hear. Even in, I would say, in what you call Christian businesses, uh, the word love. What is love-based leadership? I think it's 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 a it's a leader that can lead like Jesus did with a towel around his waist, washing feet. Um, a servant leader in the sense that I am not striving to a bottom line profit at any cost. I am striving to uplift people, to to mentor people into becoming successful children of God, businessmen and women. And then the profit or the bottom line becomes the fruit of a God-fearing business and not the target at any cost, which destroys people. I feel my spirit very touched because this is my cry in the business environment. The word love that does not exist anymore in the marketplace. A word that does not exist. And as we speak about this matter, God is love. As the professor says, as a great leader with leading, with, the, with servant heart, loving people, directing them, knowing how to give loving a discipline in the business. We are crying out, we are calling out for leaders in this dispensation, in this time to lead with love. Welcome back and thank you for being with us today. We really hope that you were blessed by all those jewels, words of wisdom and a wise counsel. Professor, won't you please pray for us to close? Abba Father, thank you that we can come and bring the businesses of South Africa, Africa and worldwide, Lord. Mm. May we walk in the fear, the awe and adoration of a holy God again, Lord. Lord, may you breathe into us your spirit, Lord, so we can walk in love above all, Lord, that our, that our focus will be glorifying you, Lord, expanding your kingdom, Lord, moving our focus to loving others, Lord, loving people and bearing the fruit of profit, Lord, that will glorify you, Lord. Lord, change our mindset, Lord. Take away the worldly mindset that we've come so accustomed to, Lord, and put us in a kingdom mindset again, Lord, so we can run our businesses, our entrepreneurships, everything we do, Lord, that we can run it according to kingdom-based principles that at the end of the day will glorify you, Lord, love others, Lord, and you will receive the honor and we will be freed from the chains that bind us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we could just share this today and mm. may we walk in your peace lord and may we yes. may be in your rest in every decision we make i pray that in the mighty name of jesus amen amen thank you for joining us right here on dream again africa come up here the lord says and i will show you great and marvelous things which you do not know about thank you for joining us See you next week right here on Dream Again Africa. Dream Again Africa. Dream Again Africa. Dream Again Africa. And manage finances God's way. 
See you next week. Goodbye.